Hey everyone, this is Justin from Frontly and welcome back to our guide on local state variables. If you're totally new to local states and need an even more grassroots approach to understanding what it's all about, I recommend going to our channel and checking out my first video or just going to the description and clicking on the direct link provided. Local state variables will bring tremendous value to your app as it unlocks an entirely new layer of customization to Frontly that you never thought possible. They are reliable, they are dynamic, and they are simple to implement once you're able to wrap your head around its key concepts. So I'm here today, once more, to help you with just that. So, to recap, local state variables are like containers that are used to store objects, and these stored objects can help carry out specific functions throughout your app. In my previous video, I used these sticky notes to help you visualize these local states as they exist in your app behind the scenes. Picture each sticky note as its own container. For each bolded header you see on top, they represent the key or field as they're shown in our app. For the contents inside them, they will represent their object or value that will be extracted. No local state can ever hold more than one value, and while your app will retain these values indefinitely until you refresh or log out of your page, they will not have any impact on your workflows until you reference them in some way. In the last video, I showed how this function can be great for surfacing values after a specific action has been fulfilled, like the click of a button. But as you're about to see, they are also great for carrying out functions in the backend too, like setting up display conditions. For this example here, I've created two forms that will serve as my app's user registration process. On their own, this page and these blocks will serve your users just fine. However, if you want to add a modern spin to your user flow with a little bit more pop to it, you can create a display condition on this second form block here that will only show itself upon the submission of this form, all with the help of local states. Here's how you can do it with three simple steps. Step one, on the first form as a submit action, select and create an update local state custom action right here. Step two, create a key and value for the local state inside of your local state action here. I'm going to make the key is submitted and the value yes. Following that, your third and final step will be going over to the second form to configure a display condition for it. How you would do that is by going onto the form to the advanced tab and selecting add condition under display conditions here. For our situation, we're going to want to set a display condition that where the local state field being is submitted, if you can recall, is the key that we entered for the first update local state action equals yes, which is the value that we entered for it after. We're done with our setup here, but please don't forget to save. When we jump over to a live demo of the app now, notice already how the second form is not visible. I'm trying to scroll down, but there's nothing there. So after completing the first form here though, the local state is submitted that I configured that currently has no value in it will update with a value yes. And that will enable the form below to be displayed to the user because the blocks displayed to conditions have been met. Let's test it out. And there you have it. Another cool thing I mentioned about local states in my previous video is that their values do persist across pages in the same app. So we can also create a user interface like this that works across pages too. Let me show you how. First, let me show you my setup. Here is my basic information form on one page and the follow-up company details on the next one. The setup for my custom actions, local state variables, and display conditions are the exact same as the blocks for my previous example. The only thing that I've added is a text block that advises the user that they shouldn't be on the page. And notice how the display conditions on this block are the exact opposite of this one. 
This block will only show if the local state is submitted does not exist. So in a live app situation, the form block and the text block in this page should never show on the same page at the same time. Let me show you what I mean. Back to my live preview, you can see that I've completed the form for my basic details and I'm ready to submit. When I click submit, it should send me over to the next page with the company details form and update the is submitted local state. Great, and voila, because you can see this form, two things have to be true now. The local state has updated to the value of yes, which satisfies the condition on the form block here and enables it to be displayed. And number two, the display conditions for the text block with the error messaging right at the top here was not satisfied because I've set the display conditions opposite to this form block which is why it does not appear now. However, if a user were to refresh their page or access this page URL before completing the first form, in both cases, the local states will have empty values. Let me demonstrate. A little refresh, and there you have it. And thus, it will present this messaging instead. At this point, you probably want to include some additional messaging that will get your users back on track, but I'll leave that up to you. I hope this explanation has made sense though. So let's move on to our final example. If you've noticed in the field while entering local state values, you can have local state store dynamic values as well as static ones. Therefore, anytime you can reference another data source and its value through a dynamic variable, you can inject those variables into the key and value of a local state as well. This is what can open up a world of possibilities for you at Frontly that can make your apps truly unique from anyone else's. Let me show you what I have. I have a demonstration here with two blocks, one that is a form block with a select field and a grid block with the same clickable options as the form. At the bottom here is an info list block. What I'm trying to achieve here with the select and grid blocks at the top here is having either of their selections feed into the info list block to show more details of the selected products. These are not typical use cases of either block as you're probably used to creating a new record with a form and a record click detail view for the grid. So how do I do this? If you guessed local states, you're absolutely right. Come check out my setup. To start, for this form, I've disabled the default submit action so I'm not actually creating any records by submitting a selection. For its submit actions, I have updated the local state I've set as product click to a value equal to the selection made by the user. The dynamic variable that would correspond to this action on a form would be the form product name dynamic variable. Over to the grid. I've set the record click custom action that will also reference the same key, but the dynamic variable will map onto the record click one. The actual product that was clicked by the user where the field heading product name is still the same. I should also mention that for both blocks, I've included the refresh block custom action here, such that when the selections have been made in either block and the local states for them have been updated, those updates are being reflected into the info list block in real time. Lastly, on my info list block, I've set the row ID to the local state variable referencing the key product clicked. And for the final row column field, I want those push values to compare against this column and generate the first result that shares its label. To summarize, through the clickable actions from the top two blocks here, it will update the product clicked local state with a value equal to the selections made and populate more details of the product click into the info list below. These requests can be made repeatedly and seamlessly because again, a local state can only ever hold one value at a time. So with that, let's do one final preview 
so you can get out there after and create some cool flows of your own. Okay, we are in the live app now, so I'm going to start with the form. If I were to make any one of these selections here, let's go with the vintage typewriter and submit it. You can see on the show block here, all the product details I have laid out in my spreadsheet that I'm willing to share to the user. Uh, similarly, if I were to jump over to any one of these items on the click grid block, I'm going to select the retro gaming console. You can see in real time the info list block below updating and displaying all the relevant details pertaining to that one record click. And I can do this as much as I want to without it disrupting any of my flows or anything like that. So yeah, very simple but highly impactful changes you can add to your workflow today to heighten the experience for all of your users. So this wraps up everything I wanted to share about local state variables. I hope you've enjoyed this mini series and feel far more capable of making some creative new flows in your Frontly app. Again, there are unlimited applications with local state variables, including but not limited to surfacing information at the click of a button, configuring display values from one block to another or one page or another, uh, or setting up display conditions. The choice is entirely yours. If you have any questions about your configuration that we could help you out with, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at Frontly Support. If you could like, comment, and subscribe to this video, that'd be great as we have a ton more content we're looking forward to sharing with you very, very soon. Until then, all the best, happy building, and have a great day, everyone. We'll see you soon.